on a completely different story at this point. Uh, I'm probably going to call it Poets on the End, this is a word for the title. Um, it was inspired by, inspired by um, Walking the Dogs, uh, Queen's Drive, it was neat. you know, it's a little one way street that goes through the town of Dallas, there's lots of that bush around. And it's a pretty good wind tunnel. And sometimes when the elderberries are out, wood pigeons basically lots of elderberries and essentially fly pissed. <laughs> and they, they use this wind tunnel, you walk along and it's, they're flying a huge rate of knots straight at your head. And at the last moment they just sort of go around. And they do kind of die on you anyway. I mean, we used to live at the back bottles of the town of Bell, and you'd be up there kind of painting the, painting the side of the house or whatever, and one would just fly down and just, you know, just kind of shoot by it really close. Just, I don't know, it's their idea of fun, I guess. Um, so, and I kind of felt the drunk wood pigeon flying was kind of like a good metaphor for what poets like, you know, kind of all our neurons firing with their ideas and our music. Perhaps it's not really working, perhaps the world presents us a little bit for doing it. But anyway, drunk in charge of a pair of wings, revoked by license for practicing, the sky's not safe, the officer said, with a fool like you flying off of his head. Observed less well by bikes and cars, for when they crash, leave mortal scars. But while drunk in charge of a pair of wings, collisions were the sweetest things. So I tried to walk. But I lost my voice. I tried to swim, but my eyes grew dim. I would fly still if I had the choice. But my wings grew weak in the interim. All modes of transport that hold sway minutely strip all sense away. But if in flight I am denied, nor earth nor heaven <coughs> shall I ride. Um, so, um, when you look at something like this, you've got the you know, how do we compose flight? Because <laughs> that's the central idea of the, the idea of flying and the idea of being sort of drunk while you're doing it. <laughs> and exhilaration um, is one thing. And of course, it's kind of also, there's also kind of like being punished for it. Um, and, uh, and, and in the final verse, of course, the idea of if I can't, be drunk and charge of a pair of wings if I can't be a poet, then I won't, I can't weigh in. There's no alternative transport for me, this is what I do. <laughs> um, so you've got dark and light and, and flying. How are you going to do it? How are you going to compose it? Um, there's a number of ways that you can do it, or well, I've chosen to do it. I mean, there, there are millions and millions of solutions. Every composer would come up with a different one. But it just has to be a viable one, I guess. Um, one of the things that you can do is find a chord shape or, or that, that has height in it. And that one works quite nicely. You've got some very some high notes with a, a low note below it with nothing in between. So there's a big gap in the way that the chord sounds. Quite oh, sweet. Um, and again, using two four bars to mess up the phrasing so that it's not. Four four that kind of makes it a little kooky and a little uh, outrageous. Um, and it never really ever properly settles on the key that it's in. Which is arguably the capo on the in shape, but it never settles on it. So there's always that sense of it being there but not being grounded. And I hope that that's a reasonable analogue for the poem. <laughs>
punk rock or the power board. You can get away with it with that, but not with this. You notice that this is incredibly ugly and difficult to play. And that's because these chords were required by the poetic idea of the song and they don't particularly fit a guitar. So I'm representing this on a guitar, it's, it's using other instrumentation on the record, organs and the like to help fatten it, and I can, it's easier to play sitting down than it's standing up, but anyway, I'll have a go. <laughs> Thank you. 